Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is pressure switches. How they work, uh, we're going to take one apart and take a look at the inside. Uh, we're going to take a look at the positive and negative ports on a two-port pressure switch. We're going to show how to test them out with a, uh, this one's a field piece SDMN6. It's a water column manometer and pump all in one. We're going to test them out. Uh, we're going to go over uh, some of the nuances of how a pressure switch could fail. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So anytime that you're testing a pressure switch out, they need to be like this, all right, installed in the furnace. If you were to take them out, you cannot test them horizontally like this. So if you suspected a pressure switch of, of being bad, uh, what you want to do is you want to see what the negative inch water column reading is and on this green tag right here it actually says 0.3 uh, inch water column and that's in the negative okay and you got to remember that 27.6 water column equals 1 psig this one has a reading on the reading plate right here it says 0.3 and this one does not even though they kind of look like generally the same kind of green tag this one does not have a negative pressure reading so that means you have to actually look this up uh, online in order to find what the negative pressure reading is or you can use your uh, manometer and pump in one in order to test this pressure switch to see what negative inch water column reading you can get in order to say close these normally open contacts this right here if you can make that out this is the normally closed contacts and these are the normally open contacts most manufacturers um, use the the common and the normally open ones okay so the, as soon as the inducer motor turns on gets to the proper negative pressure reading then the normally open is supposed to close the electrical contacts allowing 24 volts through uh, either to the ignition control module or to uh, the gas valve this one's the same way uh, this one does not have a negative inch water column reading on it okay so you have to look up that model number right there or do your own test uh, if you have a manometer and pump like this all right now this one right here this one says 0.18 uh, inch water column and that one can be tested as well anytime you test these you're going to want to test them like this in this position like this it doesn't matter where this is at like this as long as it's not sitting like this because you have the weight of the diaphragm inside. We're gonna go ahead and open this one up. And you see we have a spring right there, which means that this, this diaphragm right here is normally pressed in, okay? So if you see that micro switch right here, see like that, it's normally pressed in. Okay, this is the diaphragm inside. You have two different chain air chambers. This is the one air chamber and that's where the uh, negative water column is sucking this switch okay this switch over to this side against the spring pressure all right when the inducer motor shuts off there is a little port right here in order to get rid of the negative inch water column uh, quicker all right it's like an atmospheric vent right there if we look Past this diaphragm this particular one actually has a vent on this side it's open whereas other ones are sealed on this side but then we'll have a port somewhere else okay uh, the main reason why these go bad is if you have water getting sucked up uh, through the tubing the pressure tubing on an 80% efficient furnace this tube is typically installed right on the inducer motor housing on 90% efficient furnaces, it typically is also proving that the condensate trap is not overfilling. So it's usually maybe on the um, housing behind the inducer motor or on the condensate trap. Uh, this port right here is normally higher than wherever that is located at, so that uh, the water cannot travel upwards into the pressure switch. But if it was to clog uh, really, really bad, and it could overflow and come into the pressure switch and that's what you see here you have a staining uh, of the diaphragm in here all right uh, the, the water getting water in here could jam up the pressure switch as well if you have a crack or a tear in this diaphragm that would uh, 
to make it stop working, and then also the, the spring right here. If the spring were to fail, then the pressure switch is going to, to, to not read properly as well. Okay. Once again, don't, don't test these pressure switches horizontally, only vertically. <coughs> this one right here, once again, has a spring. And you see that this is the main negative pressure right here, okay? coming into this air chamber right here. The spring is trying to push this in at all times. And there is a differential between here and here. If you see this little hole, you have this other air chamber. And you see that this one does not have a vent. If you can see that rubber right there, okay? This has two little air ports on it. It also has this right here, which makes the air volume smaller. Okay, and what it does is it kind of smooths out the negative water column uh, reading from the inducer motor so that uh, the pressure switch doesn't uh, click back and forth, back and forth. It kind of uh, smooths out the pulse heating and, and the uh, inducer motor um, operation. Okay, on this one, it happens to be located on the positive side. We'll put this spring back in a little bit here, but uh, let's put this back together. Okay, this one right here is positive and negative. Now, the positive is not an actual positive uh, water column reading. This side typically goes and attaches to the gas valve and to the sealed uh, combustion chamber. And uh, it's attached to the gas valve just to know, just for the gas valve to know what. Um, negative pressure the combustion box is operating under and it goes to the combustion box itself and that will be a negative uh, inch water column reading that you're going to get. But this one, the negative, is going to be a larger negative water column reading. So for instance, this one is 0 0.3. I don't know if you can see that right there, 0 0.3. Okay. So, if your negative reading on this side was negative 0.6, and over on this side you had negative 0.2, then your differential would be negative 0.4, okay? And that would be a larger number than this. And it would make this normally open switch close, okay? You're looking for the inducer motor, um, to be proved by this pressure switch by a larger number than what the pressure switch is rated for. All right, so this positive is not an actual positive water column uh, reading. I know a few of you have asked me that. Uh, this is a negative reading. So what you want to think about is this one is attached very close to the inducer motor. This one is at the end of the run, basically through the whole heat exchanger and over at the farthest point, the combustion chamber. Okay, so this one is going to have a lesser negative inch water column reading than this one will, since this is right near the inducer motor at the, the largest um, negative water column area. Okay, so that's how this works. Okay, it's a differential. Um, if you were to disconnect this tube that goes to the gas valve and the combustion chamber, it obviously will still, uh, the furnace will still work. Uh, in fact, um, it's, it's going to have a larger differential now. So if this was at negative 0.6 and this one is at now at atmospheric pressure, which is zero, it's definitely going to be closing the contacts if this pressure switch is good. Okay but you, you obviously don't want to disconnect that tube from the combustion chamber and, and leave it off, okay? If you uh, have it connected to the combustion chamber and the furnace is not operating and you pulled it off and now all of a sudden, hey, the pressure switch is closing, that means that there could be a problem uh, maybe with the uh, um, heat exchanger maybe clogging up. Um, you could have some type of uh, like a cracked heat exchanger and uh, and pulsing happening in that combustion uh, chamber area. Uh, you want to think that if this side, 
just say this side did have a positive water column reading, then the differential will be larger, right? So that's not what that is. This is still a negative uh, water column reading. All right, so that's how that works. All right, this one right here has two ports. All right, so the same premise applies. One's positive, one's negative, and the negative one will be attached to the inducer motor or the uh, condensate track or the inducer motor housing, and the other one, which will be the positive, that will be connected to the combustion chamber. But most of the time, basically, just so you know, uh, a lot of times it's not the pressure switch that's the problem. It's, it's some other underlying issue, like maybe the exhaust pipe is clogged or the intake is clogged uh, or the uh, heat exchanger is clogged or the condensate uh, trap is clogged. Um, the inducer motor might not be running or might not be running at full speed. Um, you know, you have all of those different types of issues uh, as well as the pressure switch actually failing. But I will just tell you that in my experience, it seems to be, um, you know, four out of five times it's something else other than the pressure switch, or maybe even nine out of ten times it's something else other than the pressure switch. Of course, we're all going to have our different averages, you know, um, but uh, you want to check all that uh, easy stuff first, especially that condensate trap. So we're going to go ahead and start testing this out. All right, so this right here, you have common and NO, and you have the spring pressure, which is actually my thumb right now holding in the switch. So this should be normally open. We're going to test this out with our multimeter on resistance. All right, and we read OL. Now when I let go of my thumb, we have zero ohms resistance, which means it's completely connected. Press it in again, and we read OL. So that's how it works. Now this right here, the SDMN6, that can actually test the electrical connections by itself. Right here with these two uh, speed connectors, it will end up lighting a light up right here. Also, in case you're looking for these tools, I did put a link in the description below. All right, so let's put this pressure switch back together and we're gonna go ahead and test it out. We're gonna turn our SDMN6 on. And we're gonna press test. This is where we're reading the pressure from, and then this is the pump. It's wide together. And then we can attach with this hose right here. So we can attach there like that as well. We're going to take the, the normally open right here and the common, and we're going to connect in there. All right, so right now we don't see a light right there. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn this negative pressure in an inch water column up to a higher number. Okay, remember that it's 27.6 water column for one PSIG. So we are in very, very, very small negative pressure right now. We're just going to keep turning this up. All right, and that switch just tripped right there. And you see it was at 0.45 inch water column. All right, so that's negative. See the negative sign right there? So if your inducer motor is pulling more than negative 0.45, say it's at negative 0.80, and you know your pressure switch, you just tested it, and it's tripping, meaning it is actually closing the normally open circuit at negative 0.45 then you know that your pressure switch is good okay so now we're just going to go ahead and see what negative pressure it opens up at should be very close to that negative 0.45 measurement 
So if you test your pressure switch out and you know it is operating at a pressure lower than whatever the inducer motor is pulling, then that is a good thing. And that means that pressure switch is operating the way it's supposed to. All right, so now you see that these contacts have opened back up again. All right, so that's how that works. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.